since you already matched, I guess maybe you can be a little bit more uh, open with this stuff. Um, how, cause I know like some people say that they never use OMM after they've practiced it, especially in certain fields. Um, I've heard some people still use it. Like I, uh, one student I was talking to, um, I think uh, one doctor that they shadowed like used OMM a lot, especially in his family med practice. Um, and it might've been like a sports med doc too. Um, how useful do you feel that OMM is um, in practice? Uh, I'm sure it's probably more specialty dependent. Um, and do you feel yourself using it in, in the future or not really? Yeah, like you said, I think it is very specialty dependent. And I guess that family med and PMNR are probably the two main specialties where if you do graduate as a DO, then those would be the fields you would use it most heavily in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see myself using it like on patients too much. I think it is useful like just when like when I am with some of my DO friends and like my back hurts or vice versa, like it's nice to treat each other just because, yeah. you know, it's in, it's in an informal setting. And one of the big things is like, like as an internal medicine resident, you know, like most patients are going to be inpatient. They're going to have a lot of like IVs and tubes and things where like, mm -hmm. where like, you know, more than half the OMM treatments have to have the patient on their stomach or like in certain positions and most scenarios, you know, whether you're, even outpatient clinic as an internal medicine residence, you have like 15 minutes to see each patient or 30 minutes and you're going through their history and like managing medicine. Uh, so I think it doesn't set you up well to do like both OMM and medical treatment, but I think um, like family med and PM and R docs, especially if they can block out time for it and do it exclusively, then, then there is a lot of benefit to patients. You know, I did a family med rotation with a doctor that did OMM on basically every patient and, and they came to him, you know, every other week for that reason. So it has merits, but um, I think it definitely depends on the specialty. Mm -hmm. And then um, in terms of types, there's like, uh, like, is it like six or seven branches or is that right? It's like MSK lymphatics and different things like that. I, I don't know this at all. So you, you could. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now that I think about it, like cranial is a big one and then um, musculoskeletal lymphatics. Um, what else? I feel like those are probably the three big ones, honestly, mm -hmm. um, just because musculoskeletal like encompasses so many. And then there's different techniques like high velocity, low amplitude versus soft tissue techniques and all that. So there's a lot of different modalities, even within the big branches. And could you uh, briefly explain? Cause like a lot of us, even me, I, I don't really know super well how, like what exactly uh, OMM is osteopathic manipulative medicine. So you're obviously manipulating things. Um, how exactly do these procedures kind of work? Is it like uh, kind of like a chiropractic type of deal where you're like, like realigning bones and things, or is it like um, you're using different tools or how does that work out? Yeah. Well, our school like strongly suggests it's not like compared to chiropractors I'm because sorry. they're I'm sorry who, who I pissed off. <laughs> no. You're no, good. I, I, know, I, I know there's like a lot of hate to chiropractors and especially in the med sphere, sphere. Sorry. So I, I'm, I apologize to you and everyone else. No, no, you're okay. fine. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's a big deal. Cause like, I think, you know, people compare to that and like massage kind of, and yeah. I think, I think the, the overall principle of OMM is that, you know, the body works as a full unit and, mm -hmm. you know, one part that might be uh, not functioning at, at normal, like physiological capacity um, could be because there are other parts of the body that are also not working well. So like, let's say you have, right knee pain, it could be because one leg is a little longer than the other. It could be that, you know, your lumbar spine, um, when you palpate um, the transverse processes, there's like a preference for uh, like a few of the lumbar vertebrae to rotate one way or the other. So like that could be affecting your knee pain. So mm -hmm. I think um, one of the nice things is to kind of step back and see, okay, you have knee pain, like, is it because of something that happened there? Is it a trauma or is it a different part of the body that's contributing to that issue. So I think the biggest thing is um, OMM allows you to do a head to toe evaluation where you're, you're checking, you know, from the cervical to the sacral vertebra, checking for any like um, somatic dysfunctions where like, you know, or like either like in the vertebra or like ribs are displaced or, you know, um, you're, you know, like when it comes to sinus problems, like it could be because your lymph isn't like being circulated properly. So it just gives you, it gives you an additional tool to treat patient and like find the underlying cause in addition to using medicines. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and what, what type of, uh, procedures or things do you do exactly? Like, is it like, 
shifting muscles? Is it more like massaging type? Sorry, I, I'm not sure who I'm offending now, but <laughs> no, no. So yeah, so I I'd say the main the main like procedures or like ways to treat people are um, like soft tissue technique is basically um, when you're working on an affected area, let's say like the thoracic spine, you feel like, you know, some of the vertebra are like rotating one way versus the other when you're palpating on the transverse process. So um, you kind of like apply like a soft pressure and you move the tissue in like all directions and see like which way it prefers to rotate. So like you move it up and down and then clockwise, counterclockwise, left and right, and you hold it in a position of like against the position of ease. So then it like, so then you feel the tissue kind of loosen up and kind of become more like move movable in all directions. So that would be one t uh, technique. You can also do HVLA high velocity, low amplitude, where you isolate a couple vertebra along the spine or um, like wrist or elbow or knee. Um, and you just provide like a, like a, uh, like a high, as, as described high velocity, low amplitude force where you're just like giving a perpendicular force so that when you reevaluate that spine or, or whatever part of the body you're working on, the range of motion is back to normal. So those are two main, one and main ones. And then um, there's a few different like cranial techniques. Cranial is probably the most like the most out there and like not well researched and like not backed up. So that's kind of a weird one where I don't even know like what cranial technique is. But I'd say HVLA and soft tissue techniques are some of the main ones that you employ. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm.